In this video, we'll look at how to use a colorimeter to make a calibration curve. We're starting at the point where you've already made your dilution series of your vegetable extract. Here is the colorimeter, and you're going to set it on a wavelength which you can find in the window there. In an experiment, you'll get different results depending on the wavelength of light that you choose to shine through your sample. In deciding which wavelength to use, the best thing to do is to try a few different samples and ensure you get significantly different results for the range that you're using. Then you need to tear the colorimeter, and that just means taking it to zero, very much like you would do with a digital balance. Now, in this case, we are calibrating our colorimeter with water, but that's not always the case. For example, if you were using Benedict's solution, you might tear it with a blue solution first. So now I've teared my colorimeter, I can start testing my samples. All I need to do is make sure that the sample is deep enough in the test tube that the light will actually pass through the sample. And you can see I get a reading of 0 0.3. And I'm going to record that down in my table that I made earlier when I worked with my dilution series for my beetroot extract. Then moving on to my next dilution, I can simply press T to test it, wait for a second, and I take my reading from the digital screen. Then I'm going to repeat the same process with my other dilutions. And in between measurements, if you want to, you can reference it again, you can tear it, you can put your sample of water back in and press the R and make sure that each time you remove one of your samples, it returns to zero. So here we move on to some of the more concentrated dilutions and you can see that the absorbance is actually increasing in other words, our extract is absorbing more of the light. So as we produce this graph, let's just talk about the whole reason why you would do a calibration curve. You do a calibration curve with known concentrations and you plot it against uh, either absorbance or transmittance. You produce a curve. And what you use this curve for is then to identify unknowns. So if you had an unknown concentration of beetroot, you would pour it into the test tube, stick it into the polarimeter, read the absorbance, then you would take that figure across to your graph, you would go up the y-axis, find where that absorbance corresponded to, take a line across to the graph, and then read down to the concentration of beetroot extract, which would be on your X axis. So to summarize the answer to the question, why do we produce a calibration curve? We produce a calibration curve to identify the concentration of unknown substances. And how do we do that? We use known concentrations to plot a graph of absorbance, and then with our unknown, we measure the absorbance, measure across to our graph, to our line, and measure it down to the x-axis to find the concentration. So here you can see the percentage concentration of beetroot extract is plotted along the x-axis, and up the side we've got absorbance. Now there's a couple of errors with this graph. There's an error on the x-axis and there's an error at the point where the x-axis meets the y-axis. The error that's been done on the x-axis is that they've written 20%, 40%, 60% and so on, as well as writing percentage of beetroot extract. So remember that the unit or the abbreviation for the unit should just appear once in the title of the axes. The second mistake that's been made is that while there's been a zero added at the intersection of the X axis and the Y axis, there should be two zeros on there 
to show that the x-axis is at zero and the y-axis is also at zero. What is nice to see is the points are being plotted with x's, with an x that is at least half the size of a square. The other mistake that has been made with this graph is remember whatever graph paper you're given, you're expected to use the full size of the graph paper. You can see here on the y-axis that actually she could have chosen double the scale and that adds clarity to your graph. The fourth and final thing I would have liked to have seen with this graph is I would have liked to have seen the actual points plotted joined together because of course the graph is of no use to you unless you can read off intermediate values because the chance of you going to the y-axis reading across the graph and hitting exactly the same point that you've plotted is highly unlikely. So a nice curve of best fit would have finished that graph off very nicely.